That extra casing. It's just the outer. This is insulation between the. This is a good example of the, the raw steel tank. And then when we turn that around, you'll see the glass lining. I'm going to start the saw back up though and catch a couple of these corners right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is purely for your enjoyment. And for your curiosity. And my curiosity? Isn't it? I've had quite a few of these open. Reveal. Here we go. You can see their glass lining. It's purple in color. Nice, uh -huh. nice and smooth. So the water net is never in contact with the raw steel. Here's the electrical element. Let me think about this tank here. This one. This one. This one. Some of these are just preventive. Oh, okay. This one, this one was preventive here. This one actually didn't have a link. It was just getting older than that, and he wanted a new one. Okay. Okay. So check this out. I don't think we broke this. A lot of times we find these like this. These are broke. So here's the problem with these really fancy uh, Bradford White Defender cold water dip tubes. The cold water always the cold water enters the tank from the top. But it's always brought down to the bottom of the tank with, with the dip tube. Now this dip, dip tube, Bradford White came up with this system to diffuse the water at the bottom, stirring it all up so it doesn't build up sediment. It stirs it all up every single time because as you're drawing hot water out, you open up a faucet and every bit of hot water that comes out of the tank off the top, cold water replaces it on the bottom. So every time you turn on a faucet, water is spraying out of here. So it's stirring it up. It's always stirring it up. A long shower, you're pulling everything. You're you're pulling most of the sediment that tried to stay in here uh, out. So the Bradford Whites don't collect a lot of sediment if this diffuser rod stays intact. This one at some point in time broke off right where they got the diffusers. Look, perfect spacing. It broke off right there, and that's the problem. So now this is going to break off, get sucked out out into your fixtures and clog up your fixtures, you'll get little, little white plastic parts. You're like, what the heck are these white plastic parts about? Well, that could be it. Okay, so we got that. The element looks good. Just a little bit of sediment on there, but that's no big deal. That's not going to be enough to overheat it and fry it. It does have some calcium buildup. Not much though. And you can tell that it's only collecting in like the crevices here that the diffuser can't spray on real good. Mm -hmm. Kind of pushing it out. 
And I suppose if you were to drain the hot water tank, see, here's the drain right here. You see the drain? Here's the drain hole. And you can tell that the drain hole is actually just above that calcium that's building up right below it. So that's not actually going to ever drain out and get out of there. Nor is this ever going to hurt anything either. I mean, that little bit of sediment in the corner, in the corner of the bottoms there, that's not going to affect nothing. You're not going to drink it. It's not going to get. It's never going to come out because it's just it's just packing itself away in, you know, in the crevices there. That's no big deal. That's no big deal. That's not hurting anything. Here's some really okay. You got to catch this though. Um, let me. Can I move it? I'm going to push this back just a little okay. bit. We got a little fire going on right there. That's why I was trying to make it out earlier. This is good. This is good. So here is that example of that aluminum rod or magnesium rod that is deteriorating. Oh, that one is fully deteriorating. Right? So you can see that the, the ions on the water have now have something to do. It eats away at this magnesium rod down to its steel core. And I'm going to bend this out of here so you can see it. That's what I was trying to do on that one. The other one was still good though, right? The other right? one was still good. That's why you couldn't Not do it. even affected at yeah. all. Which mm -hmm. was really interesting wow yeah but this is a sacrificial rod it's creating its own electrolysis so it's creating something for the water to go do instead of attack the connections of the tank like where the elements connect or right the, or the drain valve connects right it's giving it's giving the nature of water something to do because water by nature wants to connect and attach to something there's there's ions in the water that electrons that want to go do something okay so now this rod gives it something to do and this deteriorates really small. It's magnesium. You have magnesium in your body, so there's no harm of drinking magnesium. But the way they do it is just they put a steel rod, wrap it with magnesium. That dissimilar metal creates electrolysis, and then the ions in the water are now attracted to the anode rod. And that runs the whole way up the tank. So Ooh, there, that's there disgusting. Is, which one was this? This was 12 years old. What's this? Oh, that's just from us cutting that piece of insulation. What's this? Is that part of the foam? That's part of the foam. That's from us cutting it. So, yeah. So just you know, natural calcium in the water. So as you're sleeping at night, as you're sleeping at night and the hot water tank's sitting there, anything heavier than the water molecule, like minerals, calcium, and lime, uh, will settle to the bottom. It'll eventually work its way on the bottom because it's sitting there for eight hours. So the heavier stuff will settle at the bottom. You pull your hot water off the top of the tank, not the bottom of the tank. Uh, so you never get this stuff to come back out. But you do with the Bradford White Defender with that with that diffuser rod, kicking it all around, kicking it all around here so it mixes, um, and you can draw some of it out. Obviously, not all of it out. Oh. But some of it out. Yeah, no smell. It has no smell to it at all. Does it have a taste? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, that's disgusting. I'm not afraid of no water. <laughs> so all, all, all minerals and elements that we naturally have in our body. Not bad here. It has been sitting out here for about a week. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Still want to kiss me, baby? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> okay. 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 Off to the 22 year old one, really close to the same water source. Uh, that's an electric, this is a gas. Um, kind they of were the both taken out of the same city, right? Same city, same city. I can't guarantee same water source, but they were both, uh, they're not well water. These are both uh, community or city water systems in, in the, within a five mile radius of each other. Let's see what we got. The axe. Okay, I want to fire up the saw and just cut that one little corner right there. This 
one is what was it? so this one now is 12 years old it's 22 so this is uh, 10 years older than that one it's not purple but it's definitely some kind of glass lining now that's something and this is why today's hot water tanks are just slightly larger in diameter so you got you guys when you install these really tight i mean who knows 10 years from now you may add a little bit more insulation to them making them thicker but look the 12 year old tank compared to the 22 year old tank they put they started putting a little bit more insulation on them. put it this way so i can see it no the other way okay oh that works dang see how much okay. thicker how much mm -hmm. thicker it is yeah so today's hot water tanks are more efficient than yesterday's hot water tanks makes so that's, sense that's the yeah. The clients. yeah it wasn't showing me okay. okay so come on in here this dip tube has completely lost its integrity this this crack i can fill it all the way up oh dang yep so at some point in time this thing is just starting to deteriorate that's kind of a problem too because all this stuff gets up in your water and just clogs the crap out of everything Mm -hmm. That's one thing I, I would really like to ask Bradford White to do is, can you do something better than this chintzy plastic, please? All right. But you are keeping our future plumbers of America employed, so there's that. And check this out. This is another gas unit. I don't know what it is about the electrics, but the electrics definitely always have more sediment in it. This has no sediment in it. Look, no calcium sediment in it at all. At all. Got something. Mm -hmm. Can't really tell you what that is. Well, then it broke off. Could be the anode rod. Let's look for the anode rod. The anode rod is completely gone. Oh, I feel it. Here it is. Here's what's left of the anode rod. Oh, dang. So this one has completely given up as ghost. So here's the. And you can see the, how this is kind of a part of the hot water nipple. Look, you drew, this came, this came, I just reached up and took this from here. Here's the hot water side of your nipple. This was on the inside of the tank. So mm -hmm. you draw hot water up through this opening right here on the inside of the tank. The hot water will go through there, inside of here, and then out to your hot water fixture. Cold water down through that dip tube that was deteriorated. Hot water comes right off the top of the tank because that's where the hottest part of your tank is. Heat always rises. The hottest part of your tank is going to be at the top. Cold water enters the bottom, cooling the, the bottom of the tank. So the hot water is always at the top. And that's where you're drawing, that's where you're drawing your hottest water out. Right by all this stuff. <laughs> so here's the, you know, I mean, a lot of people wait for their hot water tanks to leak, but you go through years of drinking this deterioration. So the thing about them is the manufacturers warranty these hot water tanks for six years. And Bradford White just doesn't sell hot water tanks where you live. They sell them all across the nation. They're all built the same. So these anode rods are designed to cover kind of like the worst aggressive water in the nation. And it takes about six, actually less. Some water source will deteriorate this anode rod in three years or less. Uh, but on an average, it takes about six years for this anode rod to give up its ghost, right? To give up all the outer magnesium or aluminum exposing the water to this, just this steel rod, it's eroding away as well. Um, that's that first piece that I took out. So that's why the manufacturers only warranty these for six years. Here in the Pacific Northwest, they last for about 15 years. Uh, you saw a 12 one, you saw, this is a 22 year old one. But on average, most of our tanks around the 15, 16, 17 year mark, that's, uh, that's what, two and a half, almost three times the warranty period. But there is some well systems out here that would deteriorate this within three years. There's some water, some water out here that we have to pull this anode rod out and put a zinc anode rod in because it has so much sulfur in it that it just completely uh, has a chemical reaction to the magnesium and turns it into sulfur, this, um, this gel-like material, and it'll just clog up everything, and it stinks like rotten eggs. Uh, when we get one of those, I'll show you one of those. I don't have one of those right now. but. Uh, so depending on your water source is how your hot water tank is, depending on your water source, um, depends on how long your hot water tank is going to last for you. I tell our clients out here that 
expect about 15 years. That's why I don't, I don't ever tell my clients to get the extended warranty because they'll pay $250 more to get from a six year to a 10 year warranty. But tanks last 15 years, so it's really just a waste of money. Um, so is replacing your anode rod every three to five years a good thing to do? Probably would have been a good deal on this one. Just for the fact, not that it's going to make your hot water tank last any longer, really. Um, but do you really want to be drinking and have this rusty ass wire in, in your water? But you're showering in and, well, you don't really drink. Most people don't drink their hot water. We do wash our dishes in hot water. Um, sometimes I'll make my coffee in hot water. But I always tell, I always tell people, don't drink your hot water. Um, just because it, it's coming from this. That's not good. I drink warm water in the morning sometimes. Do you? Yikes. You're drinking what's in your tank. Yikes. <laughs> Which obviously I'm not worried about. I just, I just, I'm not, I personally don't care. Um, just because I think we all come from the earth and this is all or this is all. I don't think a little taste is going to hurt anything, but I don't think I would, I don't think I would drink that on a daily. You know what I mean? Okay. What else? Can't cut open another one, so we just cut cut open three. One had the animal rod perfectly, perfectly intact. Mm -hmm. How old was this one? This was that H. We looked that up, didn't we? Yeah. What is that? And we we determined that this one was what was it, eleven years old? I want to say like eleven. That? Eleven years old. Yeah, that one was really good. Yeah. So if people have like, they have this red for white and they have um, white stuff coming in, like when they get something to drink, it's that thing? Yeah, it could be, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. If your aerator is at your sinks, when you open up the aerator, if the aerator, if your sink is kind of giving you a, well, you should be clearing out the aerators or your sinks no matter what, what source you are. That's why they put them on there. You can take your little aerator off of every sink faucet and clean that little filter screen in there. That's then, a new video because um, I don't think anyone else had to do that. I had one gal on a well system. Um, I repiped her house. She had copper. I ripped out all the copper and put in the pegs. And while I was there talking with her, I was like, what's your motive? You know, I asked her, what's your motivation of um, ripping out the copper and putting in pegs? Because at the time, this was like 20 years ago when I was an apprentice. And at the time, we were still plumbing houses in copper at the time. And... Um, she goes, well, um, look at my feet. And her toes were green. She goes, my doctor told me I got copper poisoning. I was like, oh, shit. So, repipe the whole house in pecs. Doing my testing flushing. I'm all done. I'm going to each fixture, doing some testing flushing. Just as a courtesy, I'll take off the aerators and show people how to take them off and give them a clean. I took off her kitchen sink aerator. I hit it on the countertop always so that people see what's inside of it. Full dead ants. Oh bunch of the body parts of ants but one of them was damn near full enough to identify that it was an ant I was, like, bah, bah, bah. I was like holy shit you got ants in your water which means those ants are in her well and somehow those ants are are getting sucked down to the well pump into the well pump into her system and out into her fixture and and making it and making it whole body ants you can tear apart easy I don't I couldn't believe it it's the first time I've ever seen that I was like, you need to tell your doctor this. Maybe you're not. I was like, you drink your water? Yeah, I drink my water. I was like, maybe it's not copper poisoning. And you need to get your well tested too. Mm -hmm. I mean, so she's drinking some serious organisms. Yeah, some organic material. Some organic material. Just wow. Drinking, just drinking it. I don't know. I haven't ever looked it up. Can drinking too much dead... Dead uh, ants give dead you bugs, copper poisoning? Dead organics give you... Some kind of poisoning that can turn your feet green. That's crazy. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I, I don't know if it's your copper piping lady, but you need a, you know, I mean, come on. Dang. Copper piping. Yeah. She has copper poisoning to turn her feet green. She's been drinking. Who knows? That That's just what came through. Exactly. That's just what came through. That's just what stayed there. What else? What yeah. other kind of organics is in her well water? Yeah. Bigger organisms. That's nuts. <laughs> that's nuts.
You don't have another blade. You're not cutting up open anymore. No, we're done cutting nope. up the tank. You're done cutting. We got over everything. We went over drain valve, elements, dip tubes, anode rods, glass lining. Of course, they have any more questions. Oh, yeah. Uh, and if you want any more videos or have any more questions or you want me to do anything plumbing, uh, just leave a comment and ask. I got you.